All right, so now we've got our bird flapping away merrily, we now need to add a background for him to fly in front of. So I'm actually going to make this a challenge for you. Can you figure out how to add the background so that it's centered in the middle of the screen and that the height of the background is the same as the height of the screen? So that's a new little bit that you'll have to try and figure out. Go for it. Okay, hope you got it. We're going to start off by creating a background texture. Just as before, SK texture created from an image named, and that image is not flappy1 or flappy2, it's bg.png. So the background is just like another sprite or a node, essentially, it's no different to the bird. Then we're going to create our background, just like we did the bird. And here we'll set the background equal to an SK sprite node with a texture of BG texture. Then we want to set the position, so BG dot position. And just as before, we'll set a CG point using an X and a Y, and X is going to be self.frame.midX, and Y will be self.frame.midY. So that will position it in the middle of this screen. The new bit was to set the height, so well done if you managed to figure out how to do that. We use bg.size.height, and then we're just going to set that equal to the height of the screen. So that's self.frame.height. Simple as that. Then we add it to the view controller. So self.addChild and background. All right, so let's check that out. See if that's worked as intended. Okay, great. So that's worked, but it's worked a little too well because it's, of course, in front of our bird now. So I wondered if you managed to figure out how to solve that problem. It's simply a matter of adding the background to the scene before you add the bird. So things added later on will appear in front of things added earlier on. So if we want the bird to appear in front of the background, the easiest way is to just add it second. So there we go. We've now got our bird flapping in front of the background. So as I said earlier, we want to move the background slowly to the left to give the bird the illusion of moving to the right. So let's create an animation to move our background. We'll do that up here. So we'll have a move background animation. And this is going to be an SK action, just as before. But this time we're going to use move by. And we're going to create a CG vector. With a delta X or change in X of, let's say, minus one for the moment. and a duration of 0.1 seconds. So this will move the background one pixel to the left every 0.1 seconds. Or actually, this will only do it once, but we need to make it repeat forever to make it do it ongoingly. And we do also need to put a dy or delta y or a change in y in there, even though we don't want any change in y. We don't want the background moving up and down. We only want it moving to the left. Okay, so very quick challenge then. Can you make that animation last forever and apply it to the background? Go for it. Did you manage it? It's just the same as what we did before. So I'll call it move background forever. And this is gonna be an SK action 
dot repeat forever and the action that we're going to repeat forever is move background not move background forever move background animation and then we just apply that to our background by using run and move bg forever all right let's see that in action then maybe too fast maybe too slow we'll see and there we go you can see the background moving very slowly to the left now here comes our big problem though the background eventually is going to run out and so we want the illusion that this background continues forever so how are we going to create that well first off the easiest solution is to have more than one background image. So if you imagine we're going to have three background images next to each other and then when one of them moves off to the left, it magically shifts over to the right. So essentially it's acting like a conveyor belt, moving things always from right to left and then jumping back to the extreme right just when it's needed. So I won't set that one as a challenge because it's pretty tricky, but let's see how we do it. All right, so first off, we're gonna change this animation. So instead of moving one pixel to the left, it actually moves the whole of the width of the background. And we can do that using BG texture dot size dot width. And we'll want to take a lot longer than 0.1 seconds to do that. So let's try maybe five seconds. And then when it's moved all the way to the left, we want to shift it back again. So I'll call this shift background. And this is going to be another SK action move by a CG vector. And this time we're going to shift it By the same amount, so BG texture dot size dot width and dy is zero because we're not shifting it at all in the right in the y direction. But this time we want to do it instantly. So essentially it's going to move gradually to the left, and then as soon as it's moved a whole width to the left, it will jump back to its original position. And then we're going to repeat those two actions together forever. So we'll do that by joining those two in an SK action sequence. And then again, we're going to have an array of SK actions, which are move BG animation and then shift BG animation. So that's going to take the background, move it gradually to the left, and when it's moved by a whole background width, then it will jump back to its original position. But of course, that's not going to work with just one background. We're going to need more than one. And I'm in fact going to add three just to be sure to make sure that there's no chance of any lack of background anywhere. So to do that, we're going to create a variable called i which starts at zero and we'll keep doing this loop while i is less than three and we'll add one to i at the end of each loop. So this will essentially do this three times but of course, if we do this three times, they will all appear in the same place. So instead of having the middle of the frame as the X coordinate, we're going to have the middle of the texture. So again, BG texture dot size dot width. But this time we want to divide it by two. So this will position it so that the center of the texture is halfway of the texture width from the left-hand edge. 
which if you think about it, is the same as saying align the left hand edge with the edge of the background texture. So that's what we're doing. So the first one is going to be aligned to the left of the screen. And then we want the next one to be a background width further to the right of that. So we're going to add BG texture dot size dot width. So that's for the next one. And then we want the next one to be even further. So another background's width over to the right. And an easy way to do that is to multiply it by i. i is our little counter variable. So the first time i is going to be zero. So that's going to be zero. So we're just going to get it aligned to the left of the screen. And then the second time we run through this loop, it's going to be one or i is going to be one. So it'll be aligned to the right edge of the first background. And then the third time i is going to be two. So that background, the third background will be aligned to the right hand edge of the second background. So take a moment to think about that and make sure you're convinced that that does all make sense. And let's just check. Ah, yes. So I by default is an int, which can't be multiplied by this, which is a CG float, but that's easy enough. We'll just set up I to be a CG float. Okay. So now we should see the background initially moving as we wanted. And that's working okay, but you can see we've got a problem there. It's actually aligning itself to the center of the screen rather than to the left. So that should be easily fixed. Let's just try removing the background texture size width divided by two. So it could be that the CG point is aligning it to the left of the image rather than the center of the image. And there we go. Yep. That looks a lot better. Now I'm getting this issue that on some runs, not all of them, but on some of them, the bird does not appear. I suspect that's because it's behind the background. So What's likely going on there is that when the animation is happening, the background moves in front of the bird, even though the background was added first. So we can get around that by adding what's known as a Z position. So a Z position is a position, if you imagine it perpendicular to the screen, so coming out of the screen. So anything with a higher Z position than anything else will be in front of it all the time. So the default Z position is zero. So bird will have a Z position of zero. So if we set the background Z position to be minus one, then that should always be behind the bird. So let's just check that should now have solved our second problem and we should be looking good. There we go. Excellent. I think that background's moving a little too fast. So I'm just going to change that to a seven. Other than that, we've now got our background moving and our bird flapping away. So it's time to get a bit of interaction with the user. So let's add some gravity to move this bird down and allow the user to tap to control the bird's movement. We'll do that, of course, in the next video.